Hi everyone, my name is Eric Luth and I work for Wikimedia Sverige, the Swedish uh, chapter of the Wikimedia movement. I also work increasingly with an initiative for a thematic hub around content partnerships, the so-called content partnerships hub. Uh, later on this afternoon, uh, I'm giving a specific session on a function of this initiative that we call the help desk, where Wikimedians, affiliates, user groups, anyone uh, can reach out and request support for specific projects where they want to have um, support to carry out content partnership projects, like getting uh, material or media files from a museum or a gallery or archive to the Wikimedia platforms. But in this first session, I'll talk about a slightly different part of the Hub Initiative so far. Um, the collaboration and the partnerships that we are doing with IGOs, that is intergovernmental organizations, such as the UN agencies and other international organizations, such as African Union, European Union, OECD, and many, many others. My hope is that after this session, you'll all feel do you have a better understanding of how you could work with uh, material from the UN, where you could take part and how we, how we could collaborate together to make more use of the support that we could get from the UN system? So I'm getting, I, I get, gave the session this title, the UN and African Wikimedians, Many Opportunities on the Horizon. Um, I'll just like to say as well that I, I'll try to get the presentation as short as possible so that we can also spend some time afterwards to to talk about the opportunities and, and discuss together. But why should we work together with these IGOs? Uh, actually, I'd like to call the kind of collaboration a kind of a perfect match. As you all know, or probably know, we have worked for a long time with what we typically call glam institutions, cultural heritage institutions such as museums and archives to get their content from their archives to the Wikimedia platforms. And we have found this kind of natural partnership, natural collaboration, because we have realized that we share a very similar mission. The mission to make knowledge, culture, cultural heritage publicly available uh, to humans. And I, I'd like to say that I think that we share a similar mission um, with the UN agencies. And as you might know, um, public access to information is enshrined in the UN Charter of um, human rights and the Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, most of the UN agencies feel a very strong urge to, 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 to share uh, and public, um, to, to share access to, to knowledge publicly. And, and I think that there is a natural room here for, for more collaboration and cooperation. I also think that, or, or I, I should say it like this, when, when we organized Wikimania in Stockholm in 2019, the large international conference of the Wikimedia movement, we decided to have the sustainable development goals, often called the global goals, as the, the overarching theme for the entire conference. And we did this because those 17 goals that were developed by the United Nations show a direction in which the world needs to go if we want to, to, um, to create a sustainable wor world before 2030. At the same time, we have the Wikimedia, Wikimedia 2030 strategy, which gives 10 recommendations on what we need to change as a movement before 2030, if we want to fulfill the mission of becoming the essential ecosystem of free knowledge. And I think that there is a very logical bridge here between uh, the, the, the um, uh, agenda uh, of the global goals, the sustainable development goals on the one hand, and the recommendations towards the Wikimedia 2030 strategy on the other hand. If we want to create a, a sustainable world, we also know that a lot of the knowledge that the public will need in order to be able to fulfill those goals are um, hosted by those UN agencies. They produce so much knowledge, so much research, so, ma so many reports on an almost a daily basis on how, what we need to do uh, as global citizens in order to, 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 to reach a sustainable world. But this knowledge reach, reaches very few people. A lot of the reports are very seldomly downloaded. A lot of the reports are kind of, kind of stay um, on difficult places to find on the websites of the United Nations. But as you know, uh, the Wikimedia movement, on the other hand, holds a lot of the infrastructure to bring all this knowledge together, to link it together and reach out um, and make sure that the knowledge actually has an impact. 
So in that sense, I think it's very logical uh, for us to two very different kinds of movements to collaborate together in order to create um, more sustainability in our world. This photo of uh, me and uh, Florence, who I think a lot of you will know, was taken in, taken in Rome earlier this year, in, in uh, early June, I think. Florence and I were both invited to, to, the working, uh, to the Open Access Working Group of the IGOs, hosted by the World Intellectual Property Organization and the Food and Agricultural Organization. Uh, so we were invited to, to all of those IGOs, predominantly UN agencies, to talk about how we could work together as Wikipedians and Wikimedians on the one hand, and as UN agencies and IGOs on the other hand. I think that that conversation is starting, has started very strongly within the IGOs, but I think it's time that we actually start the conversation also within the Wikimedia movement to find how we could work better together with those IGOs to make sure that a lot more free knowledge reach the Wikimedia platforms. So some IGOs have worked with the Wikimedia movement for many years, and uh, maybe one of the first one to work with, uh, with Wikimedia Sveria was UNESCO, the, the UN Agency for Education, Science and Culture. Some others are just starting. Uh, we are getting emails, not on a daily basis, but at least on a weekly basis, from different kinds of IGOs that want to explore what it could look like to actually work with the Wikimedia movement and with the, with the Wikimedia platforms. That, that, this also means that there's a lot of room for innovative experiments together with those IGOs to find out what it actually would look like to, to, to collaborate together on a larger scale. This experimentation of this inno innovativity is the reason for why we want to experiment with it through the so-called thematic hub around content and partnerships that I mentioned. So currently we have some, some funding and some staff within Wikimedia Sverige and the hub initiative to try to establish those innovative partnerships with the IGOs, to try to make the content available on the Wikimedia platforms. And so far we have pr prioritized content around, for example, climate change, biodiversity, gender, and health. Uh, but in the following slides, I want to give you a few examples of what work that has been done and what could be done um, ahead to, to give you a flavor of the possibilities before we land in a conversation around how um, you uh, who listen to this right now could actually take part. So how does an IGO gets started to work with the Wikimedia platforms. Just as with most other things, there's a lot of different scales on how you can get involved with the Wikimedia platforms. For some agencies, it's really hard to solve the, the free uh, Creative Commons licenses that are needed for um, compatibility with, Wiki, with the Wikimedia platforms. Um, so for those where it hasn't been actually possible to, to just release reports, photos, graphics, etc. Under, under a free license, we have found other ways of, of, of uh, take, making use of the knowledge from the, from the UN agencies. So for example, we worked with OHCHR, which is a really cumbersome acronym, but it's short for the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, that, that, uh, we, we noticed that there is a big gap of women human rights defenders on the Wikimedia platforms. So we worked with the local um, local organizations of uh, or the local offices of the OHCHR to, to get nominations for, for really important women human rights defenders that are currently missing from the Wikimedia platforms and devised a few uh, campaigns and challenges to make sure that these women were described on Wikipedia. So on the photo, you see one example, uh, Hindu, Umaru Ibrahim, um, a Chinese article about, is it actually Chinese? It might be Japanese. I'm really sorry about this. Um, you see an article in, in, in one language um, about Hindu Uma, Umaru Ibrahim, who's a um, um, strong feminist advocate in, in, in Chad. Um, and before, uh, before OHCHR nominated uh, her to be uh, to be one of the uh, women that should be covered in this campaign, there was no article about her on any Wikipedia. And after the campaign, uh, there are now articles in, in some 10 different languages about this uh, Chad, Chad feminist on Wikipedia. So you can really see how, how the volunteers on Wikipedia, together with the, uh, with the IGO OHCHR in this, in this um, 
situation or in this example gives a lot of visibility to something that was before that giving um, before that uh, really hard to find information about and we also worked together with UNFPA, the UN Population Fund, and UN Women during the COVID-19 pandemic to, to, to develop a system where they, their experts could, could kind of sum up key messages that were really important to get out and then included the latest research uh, together with references so that, so that volunteers could easily include those in article to make sure that the latest research was actually used in the Wikipedia articles. But it's obviously when, when, when the collaboration is deep and that you can start to get the real impact. This is, so this is an example from uh, UNFPO, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, that has released a few of the reports under CC licenses. One of them is, for example, the state of the world's forests. And when such high flagship uh, reports are released under a CC license, that means, of course, that uh, the content can be used uh, verbatim in the Wikipedia article, or it's easier to modify it so that it fits within the article and, and you don't have to think about the copyright infringements. So, <coughs> oh, sorry. So, so information from this report has been included in many different articles. So for example, the article on sustainable forest management on English Wikipedia, uh, which is receiving around 3000 views per month. And also when you Google sustainable forest management, um, the first result that will appear will be information that is ultimately taken, that is information from Wikipedia, but which is ultimately taken from the state of the world's forests. So this also shows a bit the impact that you can uh, get um, from, from getting reports from the UN onto the Wikimedia platforms. And we have worked in similar ways together with the International Energy Agency, UNESCO, UNEP, which is the United Nations Environment, Environmental Program, and many others. And when I latest checked, the reports from UNESCO are at this point used in more than 330 articles on English Wikipedia that is read more than 8 million times per month. And the, 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 this, this photo that you see here is also an example of a large scale project that we did with UNESCO. So we, we, we ran a project that we called Finding Glams. Um, we wanted to find uh, and document glam institutions and organizations across the world. There was a large lack of information about what glam organizations there actually, actually exist on a global basis. Um, also very important for when a disaster happens, be it a war or a climate disaster or uh, earthquake or heavy rainfalls or whatever it could be. You need to know about the GLAM institutions if you want to save them. If you don't have data about those institutions, then it's close to impossible to know how to, how to um, protect them in a good way. So through this project, we wanted to compile and, and gather lists of GLAM institutions from across the world and get them into Wikidata. So what you see in this photo is uh, in blue, the GLAM institutions that existed before the campaign, and you see a lot of GLAM institutions in Central and Western Europe, in Japan, in parts of South America, but nothing in Africa, nothing in large, part, large parts of America, uh, and nothing in uh, Australia, New Zealand, and, and so on. Um, obviously, it's not good at this point either, but you see with the yellow dots that are occurring, which is the data that we added, that there's actually new clusters of information available on GLAM institutions in Eastern Africa, in Nigeria, uh, in southern parts of Africa. And bit by bit, we can start to actually describe uh, what, a, what the world of GLAM institutions actually look like. We also worked a lot with getting media files available on the Wikimedia platforms. We have uploaded thousands of files together with IGOs, and they are in turn shown hundreds of millions of times uh, each year. But a lot of them are not used. Um, and I think that this is the first obvious area where you can come in and actually make a lot of difference. Um, the, the, the photos that you see are two examples that of files that are, are actually used. Um, so the, the, the graph over um, <clears throat> the graph over the distribution of forests across the world is taken from the Food and, Food and Agricultural Organization and is one of the most uh, viewed files of the FAO, more than 100,000 views on a monthly basis. Um, and 
the image to the right we received from UNESCO, uh, and it's a photo from Timbuktu in Mali, uh, and it's one of the most viewed uh, images from uh, uploaded from UNESCO. Um, and there's ways of trying of of, of seeing uh, images from Africa altogether or from individual African countries. Uh, that could be added to Wikipedia articles to make sure that they are viewed more. And I think that if 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 you would like to get involved with with the content from the UN organizations, it would be a tremendous help to add images uh, that were uploaded together with the IGOs to different Wikipedia articles. I also like to to to, to mention one brief opportunity that we, where we see a large and growing interest from uh, the UN agencies, uh, that is to employ Wikimedia in residences. Uh, several IGOs at this point state an interest in having Wikimedia in residence positions. And at the Hub Initiative, we're also trying to work, how can we structure this in a better way to make sure that it's not the same people over and over again that get the, get those uh, Wikimedia in residence positions, but that the funding and that the uh, openings that we get through this collaboration can actually have a large global uh, effect. So it, it would be really interesting to hear your thoughts on how we can benefit from this as a movement and make sure that the the um, um, the positions that are opened up, the, the opportunities to actually work at those institutions together with institutions are not just restricted to, to, the, to the, the same small group of people, but are widened and it's an opportunity that could, uh, <clears throat> that could um, be open for an, for anyone. So I'd love to hear your thoughts around that. Um, but now I'd like to stop talking. I've talked too much already, and I'd love to hear your plans and wishes uh, instead. So I've de developed a few very, very brief questions. And one, the first one would be, what material would be relevant for your work? And the other one would be, how would you like to engage in these partnerships? Um, and I, I'd love to spend the last 13 minutes or so that we have to discuss those two questions uh, together. Um, you're more than happy to write in the chat um, response to those questions or raise the hand and say that you would, would like to say something. But it would be really interesting to hear your thoughts, both, both what kind of material that would be relevant for your work, um, especially when we talk with the UN agencies and say that, hey, actually, people would like to see this work being used. That's a good way of making sure that they can also open them up. But also how you would like to engage in the partnerships. In the partnerships. So it doesn't stay at only being something that we are using as um, Wikimedia Sweden or the thematic hub initiative, but it's something that kind of opens doors for all, for all of us. So would love to um, hear your thoughts around this. So I say thank you for, for listening and look forward to continuing the conversation in the chat. Thank you.